If you're building a PC in 2017, chances are majority of your components will be RGB compatible. So that means uh, you can sync the lighting from your PC case to your motherboard, to the cooler, to the cooler fans. Uh, the graphics card will for sure have some RGB elements in there somewhere. Power supplies, not so popular. RGB storage is not there yet, but system memory, in particular RGB system memory is here. So let's see if it's here to stay. Creativity is fueled by the best instruments. It doesn't always come easy and in the process you often realize how important quality is. The RD400 by OCZ gives you quality and speed with M.2 interface, Toshiba NAND flash and a PCI bracket, making it possible to focus on what matters. Invest in storage that makes a difference with a 5-year advanced warranty. And what I have on hand is a 16 gigabyte, 3200 megahertz Evo X DDR4 kit from Gale. Jail? Gale? I don't know. Now this kit is not perfect, but it's a very good way to test the waters on users' acceptance of RGB memory in the first place. And G-Skill recently came out with their Trident Z RGB kits that are fully software controllable, although there are some compatibility issues with some chipsets and the uh, beta software doesn't work with X99. So this hardware gaming memory, yep, it actually says that on the package, tries to mitigate those compatibility concerns with the physical color switch on each DIMM, letting you choose between red, green, blue, or the RGB color cycle. And so the concept is future friendly and lighting is not being locked down by software. But first of all, the plastic switch rattles and the body doesn't really have that high quality feel despite having some aluminum plates. And the LED module at the top is uh, no low profile at all. It's about six centimeters in height in total for the entire dim. And here it is next to some low profile and just standard memory kits. And the Evo X will just maybe too tall for many CPU tower heat sinks, so maybe an AIO is recommended with these. And uh, whose idea was it to color the plastic switch in red instead of something less striking for this RGB component? That is definitely the rule number one for neutral color design is to make everything neutral so you can color things with those lighting components. In the package we get two cables and it seems that Gale doesn't really care about color neutrality as red cables are visible on one and RGB tips on on the other. So to power the lights without the software you need to use the three pin fan header with individual connectors into each dim. The cable is pretty long and it's actually quite easy to hide but if only it was a standard black cable without the red but who cares about attention to detail when you have hardcore gaming in the product name. And with the dims powered with the three pin fan header, you can manually switch between the blue, green, red, and the RGB cycle per dim. And it's always fading in and out, something that you have no control over. And that's one of my least favorite things about illumination on RAM in general. I also dislike the lack of consistent diffusion on that transparent top portion. As you can clearly see, there are some brighter spots along the strip and it's not really pretty. And the only reason why you'd want to use these in manual control is if one of the three colors uh, suits your build perfectly and uh, also if you don't have a compatible motherboard for software control, which is where the second way to power the LEDs comes into play. So we have this uh, 12 volt RGB connector, which is on the opposite side of the dim and connects to the RGB connector on your motherboard to allow you to sync uh, and control the lighting of your RAM and the rest of your components through software. So it's basically a true two in one solution, but be careful, only one method is allowed to be used at once, so only one of the cables needs to be plugged in for illumination. So you either power it via the 12 volt RGB connectors or uh, go through the three pin fan header. So now what I've done is connected the RAM into my Maximus 8 Hero Alpha motherboard with the 12 volt RGB connector. So I can control the memory uh, LED through the Aura software on the ASUS side, or you have an MSI board, you can do that same thing with Mystic Light Sync, which is their own implementation of the same thing. So here, let's check out how accurate these colors are. First of all, the red channel looks very nice and you can go into the purples and they look pretty nice. Uh, I set the NZXT X62 cooler behind me in this uh, light blue, just for reference so you are aware on how those colors can change. So it's quite simple to color match based on your other lighting 
uh, inside your case to, you know, within this half of the spectrum between the blues and the purples and the reds. However, when we enter into this green arena, it looks absolutely terrible. For example, right now, uh, we have the highest intensity of the light and the greens look like they, they look super washed out. There's no color in that. It looks white with a little hint of uh, green. And the same thing continues as we approach the yellows, which is so disappointing right now. We are in the yellow spectrum and all we see is just, uh, again, just a washed out orange. So it's, it's quite disappointing to not have any color definition within the orange or the green spectrum. And uh, that might be disappointing if you want to, you know, choose the GPU, uh, CPU temperature effect because that's all it is doing, uh, looking into the greens and the yellows. The orange is fine, but you know, my CPU temperature right now is under 30, so we are, should be in the greens and that looks absolutely terrible. So the only way to really highlight the greens is if you to not really uh, go into the color cycle effect because the green still doesn't show up, but if you were to manually select the green through the uh, that little slider switch on the actual memory. When it comes to the breathing effect, uh, it's quite uniform, it's nice. It follows in for both uh, DRAM slots equally. So there's consistency and not like randomness that goes on. But uh, I do like the, the static nature of, uh, of DRAM and being able to change the color of it. Uh, the only thing is that obviously it's not consistent throughout. For the blues, it's fine. But if you choose any other color, like in the purples also, uh, you can still see the inconsistency of the lighting spread throughout that uh, transparent portion at the top. And that's just disappointing. That's not uh, what you want to see from you know an LED specific memory kit. So that's maybe they should definitely work on the improving that so that it looks much prettier. And that's it for our first look on this RGB memory. I really love the concept of uh, combining the software and the manual control into one, but the Evo X kit is far from perfect design wise. I think more companies should be pushing with subtle color accents and soft diffusions, especially when it comes to RGB components. I would wanna see more quality of a quantity when it comes to color. And so the only thing that's left to receive the RGB treatment is RAM moving forward needs to be better. Storage, maybe like uh, RGB SSDs and then power supplies. So between those three components, where would you like the focus of companies to prioritize on proper lighting implementation? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm Dimitri with Howard Knucks. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.